everybody, Mike Pfeiffer with Pfeiffer Hobby Supply. Um, I'm going to give you uh, a new update on the uh, the rehab of the ACT here on the loop where the flood loader is. I forget which update number this will be, but we'll catch it at the title of the video. And I was going to tell you guys something, uh, first of all, before I move over there, is that uh, this is kind of stupid, but... Um, Years ago, I had an opportunity on sale to buy one of the Nosh static grass applicators. I tried using it a couple of times and it's just this huge, awkward, unwieldy thing and never had a whole lot of a success with it. Of course, I haven't really tried it a lot either. But that being said, I've accumulated a little bit of static grass and so forth. And the other day when I was, I forgot to tell you guys, but the other day when I was cleaning up underneath the table here, I decided, well, I'm going to throw away the box for that thing because I guess I'm going to wind up hanging on to it, you know, instead of sometimes selling it because it, I can't get it to work or something, you know. I get these wild whims once in a while. Anyway, I went to throw the box away and I thought, well, I wonder what's underneath here. And I pulled up the cardboard that the actual, the big uh, static grass applicator fits into to find that it also had a small hand applicator in the bottom that I never even knew was in the box had a 9 volt battery in it already and everything so that being said and there's the screen inside and there's the applicator nozzle you can see through it anyway <clears throat> stupid me uh, I didn't never know it was in there and I find this a little bit easier to use at least uh, on the outset of looking at it so when we look at the video here today that I'm gonna do um, I'll show you the results with it and uh, hope you guys enjoy this update and we'll see you on the back end. Okay everybody, um, in the last couple of days um, I have added some plaster hills over in this area here as you can see. Uh, this will be a road obviously coming back crossing over the track here and going to whatever structure goes here and a service road going in and to the facility itself. You can see that I have my grate placed in the ground there. These things probably belong somewhere else, but um, that'll be a large, as I've said before, that'll be a large coal pile and then the tractors will be shoving it into that grate which will take it in and up to the flood loader. Uh, I did get the, uh, the belts painted to match each other. Now I've just got to weather them up and put the coal on them. I think I discussed that before. And you remember in the last video over here I had the two doors to the coal mine facing out this way or to the coal building facing out towards us. And I just didn't like the way it looked so when I started doing these hills here I thought well I wonder what would happen if I just put like a hill there like they built the concrete into a little uh, mound of dirt and then they took the track out later. Uh, you know cut it back later for the track and so I don't know I I like the look of it this way much better than I did with the doors facing out and I, of course I still have the stairway and I still will be able to put a place over there for some cars to go up and park near it and obviously the train comes down to it and dumps into it uh, but anyway I kinda like the whole uh, view block thing here with just a few little hills to make it to give you a little um, oh a little texture to the landscape as opposed to being so stark and flat I haven't really figured out since I'm gonna have a coal pile back here I haven't figured out exactly what all will go in there as as scenery but I'll get to that that'll be the last thing I do um, the other thing I was gonna show you is uh, the results of my static grass applicator Oh, another thing too, while we're looking here, you'll also notice that I got the sides of the rails painted all the way around, and I did finish getting um, all of the track in here ballasted. I have not uh, dyed or stained the, the uh, ballast yet, but I did get it all in. It is all glued down. Now I've got to go back and stain it. I'm thinking about trying another color. I, I mean, we've talked about this before, and you can see the stain track on the left there in black. And I was thinking about maybe trying a, a grayish or brownish color um, on this loop that goes around here just for a variety in ballast. 
Um, I don't know, I'll let you guys know when I do another update after I've got that done. But nevertheless, uh, the area kind of still looks the same, just with the addition of some scenery around the mine over here. So that doesn't look quite so bad now. Now let's move on here to um, what I was going to say about the static grass applicator. Um, I don't know if I can... If I this will come out, I'm going to try and zoom in on some of this grass over here. And just try and real carefully pan around a little bit. The picture on the camera looks a little bit washed out, but um, I used three different colors of static grass, and I really I really like the result. I'm going to try and pan back out here. But I took it all around the edge of the the water here because I figured that's where most of the foliage would grow in a pretty arid spot. But um, anyway, I, I like I say, I like the results. You can kind of see what it looks like here. There's a, there's a spot right here where I've got a couple different colors. Let me see if I can go in on it here. Of course, there's tons and tons of videos on, on the applicators and the, the grass. But I like the way it looks. I'm pretty happy with it. There still needs to be more bushes and other foliages put in here, of course. This is... At this particular time, is I still refer to it as base scenery um, until I get trees put back in and so forth. Um, I'm going to swing over here, if I can do it without falling over the vacuum cleaner, which I'm going to get to in a minute. Um, this little hill, hill here was had pine trees on it, like in the back there, and I think I'm going to transfer a few pine trees over in this area. Maybe not so much as I get closer to the, to the actual... Um, uh, loader, but at least some pine trees in this area, and I've still got to extend my road over to the mine or to the mine building, the transfer building, with the, what used to be the old mine and now the transfer building. Um, and then I've got to get my dirt road put in going across the tracks over here and so forth, which that may be the next thing I do. Uh, but, anyways, uh, you kind of get the idea of how this is all uh, laying out here now. And really, that's about uh, about it until I get the tops of the rails cleaned off and get the uh, ballast stained. But I'm going to show you something here as far as the Cato track and the ballast that has always slipped my mind when I've done the video. Um, so let's move on to that. Okay, I don't know whether I touched on this in other videos on putting down Cato track or not, but... Um, you can see that I don't do, I'm not very neat at, at uh, painting, but I don't paint the inside behind the points on either side, on this side in here, or that side over there. Because you get conductivity issues, and uh, I just try to avoid that. Also, do not put any large amount of wet paint on this screw right here. You can see that I did get some paint on there. But if you put too much paint on there, what it winds up doing is seeping under that screw and insulating that this, the point rails from the frog rail, and you may have some issues as well. So try and be sparing with the paint there. Another thing is, and I'm going to try and get real close here, the hole right there and the hole right here, you want to try and keep ballast out of there. Um, just because it tends to jam up the switch a little bit. You also want to be sparing with your glue when applying glue um, down in this area right here or on the other side. In this area right here and this area right along here you want to be very sparing in applying your glue just enough to hold your scenery. Then you can really start dousing it down when you get down this way. But what I'm getting at is you do not want to get ballast down in there or down in there because it jams up your switch machine. So it's inevitable that it's going to go down there. In, in my previous video, videos I have taped over the, this 
the hole where the um, where you throw the switch. Not much you can do about the other hole, but what we want to do when we get done, or what I found out works, and excuse me for just a minute while I bend down here, and I'm not going to turn this stupid thing on because as you all know they're extremely noisy. This is my shop vac, and I just did it a minute ago before I started the video. When I turn on the shop vac, I hold it right down over both of those holes there and move it around a little bit to create a little vortex around those two openings and try and any ballast that's just fallen in there suck up in the in the shop vac. I did the same thing here around that one and I did the same thing on this one and this one over here and the idea is to get any contamination out of those holes. This also works if your layout has been active for many years and you wind up getting some contamination down in those for, strictly from track cleaning or anything else. Uh, and the switch machine starts to hang up on you a little bit. So uh, just keep in mind that, it, uh, and you can also use a mini vac for that. They have a mini vac attachment that will attach to any vacuum and it has a real small nozzle and you can put the, that real small nozzle will fit right over this and right over the top of here. Uh, to suck contaminants out of there. But that's another thing to keep your, uh, just something else I wanted to touch on today to keep your uh, Kato, Kato switches operating properly. So anyway guys, uh, that's about it for today. Okay everybody, I hope you enjoyed that um, update, small short update of the ACT and, and the uh, flood loader area. And uh, as always, I look forward to seeing all of you next time.